and then we go back to the uh, to the end or maybe leave it here and just move uh, what is it to move up let's go move up and perhaps a little bit down as it's collapsing onto itself and yeah so we have a kind of a an updraft here a whiplash or something like that let's apply that so that's going to be the second animation right so here's the second animation Wait. there you go so let's go store that so now we have two animations and you know you can do that in many different ways you could actually maybe store uh, let, let's say you record something with your smartphone a, a camera whatever you record some clouds that are moving right so you have one cloud sequence that's moving this way and you have another cloud sequence that's moving this way and you want to now have one displaced by the other right, so this is the one we want to show um, and you want this one to be the displacer so what you do is you flag it as the animated swap image check this box right, so now that it's the animated swap image as you're scrubbing through this it's going to pull this moving animation here into the swap image that you can see here right and so as you go to different places it will have pulled the frame one by one into the swap image so now you have two parallel animations going on you see the one here on the main image but you still also have the frames being pulled from that stored copy getting them one by one into the swap image the swap image is a single image we can see it here but it does that as it advances through the animation when we apply a filter in animated mode all right so let's go do exactly that let's go to the filter and displace by swap could be combine could be you know all sorts of different things we could do here and i would definitely encourage you to try things you know experiment with this here because you, you'd be surprised sometimes you have some weird effects here with complement mode difference mode look at that some weird weird cloud uh, patterns appearing here depending on how you combine it uh, in fact you can you can preview it here too if you if you combine this thing here you click this little preview on the on the sidebar in the upper right corner uh, you see the the preview of the image the image mixing if you enable it sim simply by clicking it it will combine both the main and the swap image and you can change the swap level you could say for instance well let's see what happens if you have a I don't know a difference mode right or if you have um, a darkened mode or you have and, and again it's doing that dynamically as you scrub through that so now here you see two images combining together right as they are animated each um, <coughs> less than maybe yeah it's about the same as the darken mode um, Phoenix yeah some of these will produce really interesting effects so I, I highly encourage you to to try those uh, but most importantly let's also see here under the filter um, combine with swap that also has some interesting benefits here that looks really dark um, and, and the thing is it's going to combine two moving parts right you got this animation you got this animation they each move in their own way and at different speeds different size elements there <coughs> uh, let's I'm curious about this so let's let's uh, combine that uh, let's render a few of those so I'm gonna say combine um, you could do a combine with swap and simply say how much you want this one or this one and if you go 50% you have both together let's animate that and so it's pulling the animation into the one and so it's showing both that's not too impressive that's not a displacement it's kind of just kind of a ghosting effect of one against the other so I'm I'm going to keep this one again in the main image and this one is the swap let's make sure it's checked here and instead of combining them the simple way I'm gonna go something different what was the other one texturize let's apply that oh that too doesn't look too fancy uh, let's go restore this let's try now something uh, more like a displacement displace by swap um, uh, what could we do possibly here normal displays jitter let's try pull displays yeah there you go see that's that's an interesting one uh, and I don't want too much on the swirl value here just a tiny little bit but I do want this thing and this thing is going to move because the two parts are moving at their own so 
apply that across the animation and you can still see sometimes you know where things came from and maybe this is not the effect you're looking for but that's the point is that you want to experiment you want to try a couple of different ways to make make things happen here all right so that's that's one way uh, one of many techniques to create some moving backgrounds uh, animate them one is static the other one and it displaces the other one or both of them are animated let's try just one more here I'm gonna go load this and, and try probably more than one to be honest uh, let's go combine or displace by let's just do the regular displace something like this apply that across the animation there you go all right and then there are a couple of other ways you can uh, create some interesting effects and one of them is simply from two images all right so let's let's go fix uh, let's go uh, drop this here let's go free the animation and uh, get rid of these i'm going to load i'm going to go back to the roots here one image and the other image all right so both of these uh, or perhaps the the versions that are uh, seamless already so i'm going to use this one and this one in fact i'm going to use uh i'm going to use this one in the main image now all right so the dark one and then the swap image has the bright one so what i want to do now is to show how i can uh, create an animation uh, not by displacing one and the other, but actually lining them up side by side. So I'm going to create an animation with just three images, three, three frames, of which one is a duplicate. So the first, I think the first two are going to be the same, and then the last one is going to go like this. So I'm going to load this one here. And what's in the swap image is irrelevant at that point. So I can clear that uh, to green or whatever. I'm not going to use it. The only thing I'm going to use are those two images and the last one here. So what I'm going to do is now uh, use a, um, a filter which is in the animated category. The uh, animated filters, there is one called the motion prediction module. Now normally you use that to predict the motion of uh, something that's moving and you want to create some intermediate frames. Let's make sure we're in dry mode here. And I'm going to uh, create something like uh, 12 times, uh, 12 tweens and OK that. Okay, so what we see is that something cr was created. It didn't actually store it because I'm in dry run mode. Let me go store the current one. I'm going to go to that again and again. So let's go save this, or store it. Uh, let's go minimize. Oh, let's close these. We don't need them. We're done with that. Uh, <coughs> so I have this animation, just uh, three frames, and I want to create a longer one where it's going to transition from number two to number three. I don't know for what reason, but I need to have one in the front here. Um, try, without ju try with just two frames, and I don't think it will work. I think the motion prediction module needs three frames at least. So that's how I set it up. And um, I'm going to go, and this time I'm going to go with 33 frames, or tweens. Right? Still in dry run mode. Maybe this will give us more time to see what's going on. Ah, we see there's some sort of a transitional movement happening, right? Let's go really slow. Let's go 333 frames, or tweens. And I'm going to uncheck this here. To scan for drop frame. There you go, 333 frames of animation. So check this out now. See how it's moving? It's changing. Let's do that again. Go. OK, so now that's a little bit on the slow side. Uh, maybe I'm going to go 222. There you go. A little bit faster. All right. So just to bring the point, to make the point that you can also do um, some some interesting looking turbulent effects by going from one turbulent image to another turbulent image, right? From this one to this one, uh, and then perhaps even back or, or or to the same one, but shifting it sideways. Or you know, you, you can you can start with this, but then move it to a different place. And the motion prediction module, uh, if it's only a small movement, may actually see it as simply moving, and it will produce tweens in between. That's what it's meant for, right? That's what, what it's uh, good at. But if, you mo if it moves too far, then it's going to try something different. Uh, you have a search distance. You can indicate how far to look for that movement. You have uh, grid spacing uh, for, for the resolution of that search. And then the fudge factor, uh, and you can tell it to keep trying and look better, all the way down to zero or one. Uh, but it's it's going to fail if it's too much of a topology change, and so it's it's going to be actually interesting to see 
that way if it produces something that you can use as a turbulent.